Uh, it is a big question, and I'm going to go very fast. Uh, Pan-Africanism is back. That's the reality, at least in the narratives of the leaders. It's not just about the, the activists. It's not about intellectualists also at the level of the state. Mm -hmm. I think the turning point was when um, the African Union launched the Africa, Africa 2063, and also with the rise to power of Mandela and Tabumbeki. Tabumbeki coined a variant of Pan-African ritual, the African Renaissance. So since then, many African leaders are, are trying. And then today, we can see that uh, there are leaders who are taking the initiative. Uh, William Ruto in Kenya is uh, seen today as a great Pan-Africanist. Uh, the president of Mali, mm -hmm. Asimi Goita, standing to the French neocolonialism. In Togo, uh, under the leadership of, uh, in the, of the leadership of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Togo, uh, Togo is about to organize mm -hmm. uh, next year uh, the ninth Pan-African Congress yeah. in Lomé. Yeah. And then you can see that Ghana is going to organize a second conference on reparations. Yeah. So things are going so, in the same direction and yeah. the leaders are speaking what they would they speak in the So truth. one of the other issues that they've raised is the fact that uh, uh, there are conflicts, for example, on the continent, and this leaders actually point to that, that have not been resolved up to this point. Uh, what is happening, perhaps, that we don't know behind the scenes that uh, could be actually uh, maybe uh, yielding some positive results and we're not aware of? Yeah, for example, the, the conflict in Sudan. Oh, yeah, conflict, the conflict in Sudan, or let's say, talk about Ivory Coast and, and Mali. When the, when the Malians saw some soldiers, Ivorian soldiers at the airport uh, with weapons, and there was tension on both sides, and that uh, crisis was resolved. So you don't hear too much about those kind of things, and it is not always about African killing each other. The war in Ukraine, it is not on the African continent. It's been going on for one year, mm -hmm. and the, the Europeans and America, no one is able to resolve that issue. Mm -hmm. uh, so my, my point is that there is an African story, a tale of African hope that, you know, we don't always hear about. Uh, even the question of migrants is not always what we see. People in the, on the continent of Africa, they're moving like across borders, but we only see those who are dying in the Mediterranean. So for me, it's about the story, it's about the image, it's about what the media is portraying. So uh, despite the, of the portrayal of the media, do you... And, uh, do you uh, a sense that actually there is progress in, for example, uh, dealing with those issues as a continental body, for example, the African Union, or is this an effort by individual countries? No, this, my point is this. Uh, I said that several times when I came here to, 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 to Voice of America. It is not easy to be an African leader. It is not easy to be an African. So we, when you see all those forces at uh, the West or the East in the past, and to do, today we can see China back in Africa, we see Russia back in Africa, we see America still in Africa, and we see the European powers. Mm -hmm. Africa has always been the battleground of, the super, of the, all those powers. So, of course, all the things are impacting somehow negatively the welfare of the African people on a daily basis. Of course, we have our own flaws, our own weaknesses, and our own limitations. But there are, my point is that there are things that are going on, and then we do not always try to talk about that. So I gave you the case of Ivory Coast and Mali. Mm -hmm. Even when uh, there was the Ivory crisis, it was resolved so, somehow. Yes. Briefly talk about that. You know, we are seeing uh, thousands of youth trying to leave the continent, but the African Union says they're creating jobs on the continent. Uh, wh what is uh, challenging that dream to come true so that young people can stay home? No, yeah, it, it is not easy. There are, it is difficult, and I know, but this is a problem you cannot resolve one day. Yeah. My point is that, you know, we, let's see, I don't, have you done a show on Aliko Dangote's refinery in Nigeria? Not yet. No, not yet. Yeah, yeah. That is part of, <laughs> that's part of the problem. Yeah. So these are the stories we want to see. And All then right. things like that are happening, and we always see media talking about uh, hopelessness and helplessness in Africa. And I think that there is a story, an African story, that needs mm -hmm. to be highlighted. And we'll continue telling okay. the stories. We much. really appreciate okay, your, thank you. your analysis today. Mm -hmm. uh, professor Lagoke is an assistant professor of history and Pan-African Studies at Lincoln University in Pennsylvania.